Hello, my name is Stuart, the Unrepented Atheist. I'm going to be reviewing the discussion between Jordan Peterson and um, Richard Dawkins. Alex O'Connor was there as a kind of host and some kind of adjudicator. He was stopping the conversation now and again and trying to keep it focused. Uh, I don't think he did a very good job at all, but more of that later. So first of all, I would like to say that I think Jordan Peterson as an, is an incredibly difficult person to have a conversation with. He's very aggressive. And I'd like to just show you this clip so that you can get an idea of what I mean. Let's have a look. Practice that process of voluntary confrontation with the terrible unknown. It can catalyze transformations that reach all the way down into the cellular. And so we, we abstracted the fight with the predator into the imaginal space. We play out various tactics. Some of them are conserved and transmitted. They adapt themselves to the structure of human memory and they make the foundation for our most fundamental narratives. Okay, yes, I think you can see there that Jordan Peterson showing a lot of aggression with these, you know, with these movements. It's almost like he's punching Dawkins with these, I mean, almost physically with his fists, with these movements. He's jumping around in his chair. He's a big man. He's using the size of his body. He's got a big voice and he just looks to me very aggressive. I've spent time with academics when I was at university. I was in postgraduate and I've spent time. I've gone out with them. I've spent time in the universities with them around a table. They don't present themselves like Jordan Peterson does. They're very calm. They're very measured and they're very considerate to their interlocutor. They're not throwing their arms around and behaving like he's behaving. So I don't know. I believe that he is an academic, in fact, and that he's written books. But I think that before before he became famous through this, I don't know, there was some issue with um, trans and pronouns or something that uh, brought him to people's attention. I think if that hadn't happened, he would be relatively unknown today. But anyway, we're left to deal with him. For some reason, people give him a lot of respect. I don't know why. I don't think that he's, um, I don't think that he's impressive at all. But a lot of people disagree with me. So let's just go on then and look at what happened in, in this discussion. I'd like to say, first of all, that, not first of all, second of all, I suppose, <laughs> that Alex O'Connor uh, did the best that he could, really. It's very difficult to deal with a beast like Jordan Peterson. It really is, because once he starts on something, he literally doesn't give any opportunity for anybody to get in. He speaks so quickly. He doesn't leave any pauses. And I mean, to give him some credit, it must take some intellect to string together that narrative. I mean, that um, monologue before he goes off on, on, on one of his monologues, unless he's rehearsed it so well. But really... All Peterson's big thing, Peterson's big thing is that uh, since early times, man has been creating narratives before they could write. There was the oral tradition. Man has been creating, creating narratives as a way of understanding existence, understanding the world, understanding himself, and that these narratives have been used and um, symbolism within the narratives has been used to improve his understanding of where he is and where he is in relation to existence, to better himself, to have a greater understanding and to acquire knowledge and actually improve uh, the, the lot of the species in existence. There's really not much more to it than that. The only thing more to it than that, I suppose, is that he, said, he talks about a unity of knowledge where you've got religious knowledge on one side and you've got scientific knowledge on the other. And of course, Religious not religion had a big um, hand on knowledge for a long, long time until really relatively recent times. So there's this conflict between the two. He doesn't want there to be a conflict. He thinks that they can be brought together into a grand unity of knowledge and that they've got a lot to say to each other. Richard Dawkins does not agree. He doesn't agree with that at all. Um, Peterson started talking about... Um, a dragon as a as a sort of literary representative of a predator and how we can see a predator in human beings we're a predator for knowledge we want to discover we want to we want to sort of conquer and sort of in a way defeat knowledge and make it our own 
isn't that useful. Well, whoopee do, yeah. I mean, big deal. So what? Uh, that's not really what in what interests people like me, skeptics like me, and atheists like Richard Dawkins. Okay, big deal, yeah. Whoopee do. Uh, go and write a book about that. That's not what we're interested in. We're not interested in any of that. We're not interested in any of Peterson's narrative bullshit about, you know, how how the Bible is this incredible um, uh, narrative of pure genius that nobody, it must be. He seemed to be suggesting that, well, there are certain tales like the, the tale of Abraham um, must be, he almost sort of suggested it must be divinely inspired because nobody could have written a tale of such a genius. Well, well, really? No, I don't think so. I'm not terribly impressed with the Bible. I'm a lot more impressed with Shakespeare than the Bible. And I don't believe that Shakespeare was divinely inspired either. So Peterson went and kept on making these, um, or at least kept on attempting to validate religious belief by claiming that the Bible is such a special work with so many deep insights. Maybe, just maybe, it's divinely inspired. But really, this is what we want to know. We want to know if there is a divinity. And Richard Dawkins said to Peterson, well, look, um, you're interested in dragons. I'm interested in reality. I like that. I, I, I mean, <laughs> uh, Dawkins has a brilliant way of just cutting down his interlocutor with one with one phrase. You like dragons. I like reality. That was a brilliant put down, I thought, and more intelligent than any of the bullshit that Peterson did in the whole in the whole uh, discussion. So, of course, sooner or later, after they'd been through Richard Dawkins describing what a meme is, that, you know, it's like this idea which spreads like a virus and it's unstoppable. And that's a, that's a sort of meme. And Peterson said, well, that's what I'm talking about. Because if you go back, the Bible's a meme too. It creates these things as well. They're all like... It's a work of genius, man. You should really read it. No. Well, I don't really believe that it's a, it's a work of genius. But okay, maybe there were these. Maybe you could make an argument that, yeah, there are memes going back. And that memes are another way that the human being, that, that the human race has been able to uh, evolve. And yeah. So once Peterson got his teeth into this sort of idea that, uh, memes are something which are very similar, which which have helped hu human evolution. Then he tried to sort of bring together, you see, science with the theory of evolution and memes that we find in religion. And he's all the time trying to unify them into this unity of knowledge that he's talking about, trying to harmonize <laughs> somehow religion and science. And of course, Dawkins was having none of it. He was pushing back. When he got the occasional opportunity... Because Peterson was talking virtually non-stop for like three or four minutes at a time. And then Dawkins maybe got a chance to speak for 10 seconds. And while he was in mid-thought, Peterson would come back in. And and then he would sort of hijack things. I think that really, I think that um, Peterson could do with some lessons in how to hold the conversation. That it's important to listen and give your interlocutor a chance to make a point and be less aggressive. Be less aggressive because that is never going to be constructive. If you demonstrate that amount of physical and um, verbal aggression on the person you're talking to, it's never going to be a good experience. It's never going to produce good results. And I don't think that this discussion produced any good results, despite the fact that in the comments section, of course, it's Jordan Peterson's channel, there is gushing praise for Jordan Peterson. Oh, you're a genius. You're amazing. You've got so many deep insights. No, I don't believe that Peterson has any deep insights at all. He keeps on talking about what a genius Dostoevsky is. And um, well, I mean, who cares? Yeah, I know I've read Dostoevsky, a great writer, a really great writer. And maybe he had something to say about the human condition. Maybe he did have something to say. But uh, primarily, he just created incredible... Uh, characters, really believable characters, and uh, the books are written extremely well. He really knew how to tell a story and how to get into the psychology, how to get into the skins of the characters and make you feel that you're part of it. 
yeah, incredible, incredible writer. But so what? There have been other writers that, that have done the same. But it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to say about what I'm interested in and what, say, Richard Dawkins is interested in. Is there any truth behind claims and behind religious claims? That's what we're all interested in. But Jordan Peterson wants to talk about something different. And when Dawkins says, well, do you really believe in the virgin birth? Peterson says, yeah, but that's really trivial. That's not important. In one sense, I agree with him because we could say that the all the religious texts in history should be seen as literature, not as um, historical documents, not as documents purporting to make truth claims. The problem is they do make truth claims. And they make claims like there was a virgin birth, there was a resurrection, miracles, etc. And these are really what underpin the religion. So they've got to be addressed. Now, Peterson doesn't really acknowledge that. He's happy to let the truth claims stand, not challenge them. When you ask him what do you think of the what do you think of the virgin birth? Do you believe in that? He'll suddenly say, Well, I don't really claim to understand everything that's in the Bible. I mean, that's just um, I mean, that's just bullshit for, well, I don't know, or I don't want to answer this question. Eventually, eventually, Alex got him to admit that, Mr. Dr. Peterson, when you say that um, you don't understand this part of the Bible in terms of the virgin birth, as to whether it's true or not, are you saying that you don't know? And he suddenly said yes. He doesn't know whether these claims are true or not. Okay. Well, he's saying he doesn't know. He didn't say, I mean, he. but I've seen him in other interviews saying that it's probable that that did happen. It's probable that if you went back in time to the Jesus tomb, you would see a man walking out after the third day. So we've heard him say these things. And this is one reason why he's got an absolutely massive Christian fan base. I saw some people in comments saying, Richard Dawkins took me away from religion, but Dr. Peterson, you brought me back. Well, um, I mean, Richard Dawkins shouldn't really be taking, nobody should be taking anybody away from religion. It's a matter for the individual to go out there and investigate all the claims and then make their own mind up. I don't think one, any one person should be taking anybody away from religion. And if Dawkins took some anybody away from religion, then I would say that person who was taken away from religion is at risk of being taken straight back into it by the sophistry and nonsense of somebody like Jordan Peterson, who it seems doesn't even really believe in God or any of the miracles or supernatural claims in in the Bible. Okay, so Alex tried to pin him down on that. Yeah, and he did say in the end, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, in that sense, for me, that was the only valuable part of the entire uh, discussion in in that sense that we that Peterson said no yeah I don't know I don't know if you guys saw it. any of you who saw the um, the broadcast he did actually say I don't know when asked do you believe in that he said no yeah it means I don't know when I say that it means I don't know so what else happened yeah so he's talking about this three volume set that he wants Richard Dawkins to read by Neumann I think it's a set on the um, history of religious ideas sounds like an interesting uh, three books to read i don't think that richard dawkins are going to have time for that i wouldn't mind having a look at it myself because i'm interested in that kind of thing but the reason that um, the reason that peterson wants dawkins to read that is because he thinks that dawkins might have a eureka moment and see that there is a way to harmonize somehow um, religion and science I don't think that's going to happen, frankly. Uh, let me just look at my notes to see if there's anything else. Of course, there was a lot else, but most of it, most of it was really. I mean, most of it was really that. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, just reading my notes here. Yeah, he's just. I've just written down one or two things that he said, that um, people have been generating fictional worlds, so that. Yeah, in order to observe um, humanity's role in the world, people have, yeah, well, okay, fair enough. I agree with that. I mean, but big deal. That's not really saying anything, is it? Oh, yeah, and he said that, um, 
about Neumann or about somebody else. I can't remember the name because I, I tried to catch the name, but I couldn't catch the name. He said this particular writer uh, demolished postmodern Marx, demolishes postmodern Marxists. That's why he's not given much credence in university. And he said that this had to be done, that postmodern Marxists had to be demolished. <laughs> um, so, you know, if books are not getting traction in universities, I tend to have a kind of suspicion that those books are maybe not really worth uh, the paper they're written on. I mean, maybe I'm wrong about this completely. Okay, well, I think I'm going to probably leave it there for now. This is this review really has just been a taster of, or rather a reflection of some of the points that stood out for me. But I thought that Peterson came off really badly, as I said, very aggressive. And I, I kind of felt uncomfortable. I found it difficult to listen to. He's such a sort of overbearing, aggressive person that I'm really surprised that he's got as many fans as he has. But anyway, what do I know? There we are. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.